The placenta is a very important organ that exists during the development process of the embryo. Now, there are many important functions of the placenta, but before we discuss the functionality of the placenta, let's actually focus on how the placenta is developed. So, during early embryological development, we have a process known as implantation take place. And during that process, the blastocyst actually implants itself onto the endometrium, the lining of the uterus. Now, as soon as implantation takes place, the trophoblast cells of that blastocyst begin to produce digestive enzymes. And these digestive enzymes are released into the surrounding tissue of the endometrium. And what those digestive enzymes do is they begin to break down and digest the vascular and connective tissue found inside that endometrium and that not only allows the embryo to make its way entirely into the endometrium but it also forms these tiny extensions tiny projections known as the chorionic villi so the purple section is the chorion that develops from the trophoblast of that blastocyst that implants itself onto the endometrium and these chorionic extensions are known as chorionic villi and they basically form a structure that looks like a capillary bed so as the circulatory system as the cardiovascular system of that growing embryo develops these chorionic extensions begin to become populated with the blood vessels and so inside these chorionic villi if we take a cross section we'll see these uh, this population of blood vessels and these embryonic blood vessels eventually connect to the umbilical arteries and the umbilical veins found inside the umbilical cord and those structures, those blood vessels eventually directly connect to the circulatory system of that fetus. Now, once those digestive enzymes begin to break down the endometrium, the connective tissue, they also actually break down the vascular tissue. And that means those digestive enzymes released by the chorion eventually break down the maternal blood vessels found within the endometrium. And as soon as we rupture these blood vessels, the blood of the mother actually oozes out and leaks out into the endometrium into the area surrounding these chorionic villi. And so we have the pooling of the mother's blood shown in a diagram as this light purple section. And what that allows is it allows the exchange of nutrients and waste products and minerals and oxygen and carbon dioxide between the blood of that fetus and the blood of the mother as we'll see in just a moment. So this entire diagram basically describes the components of our placenta. We have the chorion that comes from the trophoblast. We have these chorionic villi which are in contact with the mother's blood and we have these maternal blood vessels which essentially have ruptured and created the pooling of that blood within the endometrium in our placenta. Now we also have the umbilical cord which contains those two blood vessels, the two types of blood vessels. We have the umbilical vein and we have the umbilical artery. And the umbilical cord also actually contains two types of extra embryonic membranes. It contains the lantos and it also contains the umbilical, uh, umbilical vesicle also known as the yolk sac. And the chorion is the third type of extra embryonic membrane. Now, the next question is, what exactly is the function, what is the purpose of the placenta? So, the placenta has several important functions. So, let's begin with the endocrine function of the placenta. So, as soon as implantation takes place, the cells of the trophoblast that eventually become the placenta begin to release a hormone known as the human chorionic gonadotropin hormone, so HCG. And what the human chorionic gonadotropin does is it goes on to the corpus luteum found in the ovaries and it causes the corpus luteum to continue to release progesterone 
progesterone and estrogen because these two hormones are needed to actually maintain the thickening of that endometrium. Now eventually when the placenta actually forms, that placenta will stop releasing human chorionic gonadotropin and it will begin to release its own estrogen and its own supply of progesterone and that will ultimately allow the maintenance of that endometrium. So these are the three hormones released by the placenta. Not only that, it actually also releases a fourth hormone at the end of the pregnancy. So towards the end of the pregnancy, the placenta also releases a hormone known as the corticotropic releasing hormone or CRH. Now, what the corticotropic releasing hormone does is it goes on to the pituitary gland found in the brain and it stimulates the pituitary gland to release a hormone known as ACTH. And ACTH goes down to the adrenal gland and it causes the adrenal gland to produce the precursor molecule that then goes down into the placenta and the placenta uses that precursor molecule to form even more estrogen. And the rising level of estrogen ultimately causes the contraction of the smooth muscle found inside the uterus and that eventually leads to the process of childbirth. So one of the functions of the placenta is to act as an endocrine gland and it basically produces these four different types of hormones. Now the second and probably the primary purpose and the primary function of placenta is to act in gas exchange and nutrient exchange. So the placenta provides nutrients and exchanges gas between the blood of the mother and the blood of the fetus and this takes place within the chorionic villi. So these chorionic villi contain the network of blood vessels that are part of the circulatory system of that developing embryo and notice that the chorionic villi are actually surrounded by a semi-permeable membrane. So note that the maternal and the fetal blood do not actually mix because we have this semi-permeable membrane. So certain things are allowed to pass across the membrane but things like blood, red blood cells and bacterial cells and large molecules cannot actually pass across this semi-permeable placental membrane. So the placental membrane found within the chorionic villi creates a semi-permeable membrane that acts as a barrier for relatively large substances such as bacterial cells and red blood cells. So that, uh, that allows us to jump directly to the immune protection of that placenta. It basically not only protects that blood system of that fetus from acquiring the same type of bacterial cells and infected cells found within that mother, but it also allows the movement of tiny antibodies called immunoglobulin G. So one type of antibody known as IgG or immunoglobulin G can easily make its way ac across the membrane and into the blood system of that fetus. And the immunoglobulin G protects that fetus from different types of pathogens that can inf infect that growing embryo. So we see that the placenta as a result of allowing the movement of immunoglobulin G gives that growing embryo passive immunity because when the embryo grows, the immune system of that embryo is not fully developed. So function number one is as an endocrine gland Function number two is it provides a route by which there's an exchange between the nutrients such as glucose, water, minerals, so salts, as well as amino acids between the blood of that mother and the blood of that fetus. Gas exchange also takes place and that's important because as the fetus is developing, the lungs of that fetus do not actually form until after birth takes place. And so the placenta acts as a system where gas exchange takes place, oxygen goes into the blood and carbon dioxide is expelled as a waste product. 
And so that leads us directly into function three, waste product removal, or function four, waste product removal. What that basically means is not only carbon dioxide is removed by the placenta from the blood of that embryo, but also other byproducts, wasteful byproducts, such as urea, uric acid, and creatinine are all released by the blood of that fetus and into the blood of the mother and the blood of the mother eventually dumps those waste products into the kidneys where the kidneys essentially recycle and excrete those waste products to the outside environment. So these are the many important functions of the placenta and the placenta only exists during the process of embryological development of that fetus which takes place inside the uterus of that individual.